is the First Down Finance Committee, and the members are Gabe Johnson, Connie Hillman is our Finance Director, uh, Patrick Lusa is our Administrator, Dave uh, Pritchett is a member of the committee, and I'm Mary Cope, and I chair the committee. Chelsea didn't tell me you had to bring us five dollars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we welcome you, and welcome to the new dispatch rep, and uh, look forward to having you here on a regular basis. And uh, we know your job is to make us all look good. Which is tough. Look how tough. That's why you don't have a camera. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And our guests are here for the um, uh, Royal Tire TIF project, but, and we will get to them in just a minute, and we welcome you. The first item is the approval of bills and payments to the contractors, and I wanted to ask you about these a couple of these, if I could please, Connie. Yes. These are the prepaid. Yes. And um, on the, uh, uh, let's see, okay, court administration, uh, administration on the filing fee. It must have been a filing fee for something that um, we we're filing with the county. Would you know I'd have to look us? into it, Mary, beforehand. Okay. I don't know off the top of my head. Well, I'd be curious to stick it in my okay. box. And then the other one was, um, the Landsberg Landscape, is that from the library? The Edible Garden Down Payment? I do believe it is. Because the library How much was it? Um, $624. Yes. yes. And yes, the library was. is spending that money from grants that we have. Yes. And so just for everyone's information, so. I will research it just to make sure, but that doesn't Okay, thank you. I'm sure that's it then. And then on the others, we have contractor improvement uh, projects, and we have, uh, uh, let's see, we have a total of, I didn't see the total, It'd be about 43,400. Yeah. What is your pleasure? Move to approve. Second. Discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. And uh, item two is the Royal Tire TIF. Tonight, all we are asked to do is adopt a resolution approving conceptual approval and calling for a public hearing to be held June 15th. And so why don't all of you come up here and join us at the table. And we know Sheila, but uh, you might want to introduce yourselves. And we'll ask you to talk a little bit about your project. Paul Dunnick. Uh, I'm Pat Dunnick. Okay. And we know she will have her camp. So, and so I was going to start it then. Please, so, absolutely. Uh, with you, and then turn it over to Pat and Paul to share more about their company and their proposed project. And as you know, uh, Blavik is a partner with the City of Grayland trying to encourage investment and economic prosperity in the community. Had the pleasure to work with the Royal Tire Company now for some months, along with the City of Grayland staff member teams looking at that site and the opportunity and they come up with a new business model um, to revolutionize the retail experience um, when a family member is buying tires. And they're gonna share more about that with you. And they'd like to do it on their existing site in the community. And I had the pleasure of working kitty corner um, from the property for several years. Um, would periodically go over and visit when I needed work done. Um, and you know, you, it's an interesting site with a lot of activity on a small, um, parcel of property and with the layout and how vehicles move in and out. And um, uh, they would like to develop there and they'd like to make it work and they'd like to make um, more than a $1.2 million investment onto that site. But they started inquiring in order to help make it possible what funding tools might be available to complement their private sector financing, whether it be in the form of owner equity and or bank financing because they're looking at a combination of both that over time we could um, support them with to make it financially viable to redevelop that site compared to like a bare land type of property. And so, you know, um, after getting to know them and their team members in quite some depth and what they feel they need to be successful at that site, tax increment financing is the tool that came to the forefront as an option that the City of Brainerd has um, to make available. And of course, this is at a preliminary state and the fact that um, you know, we, we like to package the project that's being considered and have the city look at it. So does this make sense? Is the concept um, something you'd like to see for your community and you would um, consider participating financially? 
The Royal Tire uh, Company has put on deposit, along with their application, $15,000, and that covers um, the cost to start the consulting teams that we need to pull together in order to look at tax increment. Tax increment is a very um, technical tool. It's in state statute. We have to follow all the rules and regulations associated with it, and it will take about um, a six-week process now to get financial consultants, legal consultants, um, what we call redevelopment specialists that come in and look at the property and make sure that it is substandard to a degree requiring substantial renovation according to state statute. That's my question. Yeah. Yep, and so we will have an outside team looking at that to make sure that it really is. And then also um, we'll have the, uh, the assessor's office in helping us look at what do they expect the estimated future market value to be? What kind of increment potential is there? Then the financial consultants will say, how long would it take that we have to keep this TIF district in existence in order to help at the level of financing um, they need, which is approximately 200000 They're still getting um, a couple uh, numbers put together, but all the preliminary information indicates about $200,000 is needed to help make the project work. And that would be pay-as-you-go, so the city would not have to um, uh, return any funding to the developers unless the increment is generated off the project and then a percent of that increment would be returned annually for a period of time until such time as um, whatever dollar amount is agreed upon. So um, explain that last sentence. So for instance they've, they've currently asked for $200,000 right. mm -hmm. on a present value basis and if the increment, like you have a base right. value that's generating X number, right. and the increment is X plus, we can only capture that plus right. and we would capture it for however many years to generate that $200,000 okay. assuming that's what everyone agrees to. Are you suggesting that the increment might be less? Might well, that not would be, be sufficient. My hope that you know, as we do a financial analysis, because they've indicated to us two hundred thousand, based on what they know today, they're still fine-tuning numbers and. and the so important piece of that is until we get to the next steps, the we won't know. Right. So, but okay. we're talking concepts here today. Right. right. And and so, you know, it's very possible, like, um, if they get a better bid that comes in, that all of a sudden their project goes from 1.2 to 1.1, um, that they would need something less in order to help make it work. And so we'll be looking at that through the financial analysis that, that um, 200000 is necessary based on everything we know, everything they know, and it does make sense and or um, exactly what that dollar will be following that next step, like Patrick said. So do either of you gentlemen want to talk a little bit, a little bit more about your proposal? Well, I can, I can start a little bit. Uh, uh, anyone, anyone been in that building? Yes. Yeah. Substandard. Well, we'll find that out, but we, we've, <laughs> we've owned it or had this business for 35 years. We've remodeled the building several times, you know, to a certain extent, but today's uh, uh, tire market, people just won't come in there. And uh, so we're looking at, at uh, making this into a place that people want to buy tires. Now, our normal, our first choice we, we picked out was a building that was too big for that lot. So that was our first go around was to, you know, to, you know the, the concept we wanted to was too big for that lot. So we scaled it back because we like to stay in Brainerd. You know, we'd like to be on that lot on that, you know, in the corner on Washington. I've uh, been there a long time and it's a, you know, it's a decent spot, it's a good spot. If we scale back the project uh, to this to this level and that's kind of where we ended up, uh, ended up now. We feel that this would be our best choice rather than trying to, trying to move it. But uh, we're a little leery on the project as far as, you know, demolition because that's a variable. Uh, so there's a few things we have to we're, right. we're sure of until we get going a little further. And you, did you want to add to it? Well, part, you know, part of it is, you know, demolition is, is like Paul said, it's a variable and it's something that you don't have if, you, if you're building on bare land. So it's, it's, a, it's an additional cost that we had no idea we were going to get into with something that big. Um, and then the other part that is just a soft cost that, that you know, you don't, you don't put anywhere is we're going to be not operating for four months. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and we, we run another store on the other, by the industrial park for our commercial stuff. So we have two stores out actually. So we're going to make an attempt. Mm -hmm. You know, and moving some people, but how successful that will be, I'm not sure. I mean, we'll probably get a couple, uh, you know, some customers to move, but some might just make it more convenient to go somewhere else. So there's going to be a little pain there. And uh, so, you know, demolition, being down for a while, um, 
scaling back the building to you know something smaller than we expected or you know, those are the things that we didn't you know we didn't really really want to do yeah. but it, but it'll work it'll work and I, and I think the other side you know put a building like you know you see the pictures in there will quite enhance that corner and uh, so I think it, it, it'll work for us you know it just we just need the, need a little our plan is to keep our employees working. So we're going to have we're going to move them down into the, the our commercial store. We have good people who want to keep. Them. Sheila, is the four hundred and twenty-seven thousand seven hundred? This is actual the property value currently. Correct. Okay, that's what I'm. Well, I think it is wonderful that you're staying in Brainerd. And I long thought that the Washington Street corridor is the one that needs to be redeveloped. And that's where a lot of emphasis should be. It's a heavily traveled area. And I think the more that we can redevelop and make it an attractive place where people will stop, too, and do things, um, I think that's really going to help this entire city. And as everybody knows, I don't like TIFF. But I'm so pleased with your proposal. I'm really just genuinely so happy to hear this. I mean, genuinely, this is so good. Go get that AED. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the syrup. It's the syrup. <laughs> I never thought I would hear that. You know, you know, come on, are you sure this is the syrup? <laughs> uh, but I really, really, um, I think we need to make this work and make it go for you and I was telling them before we actually started that if it would be possible to do a 10 year or even 15 I one of my big gripes of TIFF is the length of time so often that it's given for I said anybody who's alive today probably be dead by the time the TIFF runs out on something <laughs> <laughs> well, we got some that are 30 years don't we I believe we have at least one 30 years oh, uh, old. And you will be an old man by then. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be in my second round. But at any rate, uh, if and Sheila yeah. said that they can look at that as, as it goes through here. Mm -hmm. So tonight we're just asked to approve the concept and call for the public hearing. But I'm sure my uh, fellow members here may have some questions or comments of their own. I don't really have any comments. I think it sounds like a great project. I'm really excited for it. I'm supportive of moving forward on it and see what we get. Yeah, kind of, kind of along the same thing. I mean, we keep looking at bringing new businesses yeah. into Brainerd, and I think just as valuable and sometimes more so as keeping right. present businesses here. And, you know, like Mary said, really appreciate the fact that you guys are looking at staying in Brainerd. Um, I also like the idea of possibly reducing the time. The TIF, I mean, it's, it's conceptual. I mean, you can look at it. It's it's kind of open and see what works for you guys, what works best for the city, and kind of go from there. But I, this is really, really good news for us. And I, I like your concern for your employees. Mm -hmm. And I see you hope you can hire a couple more. And, um, yeah. and maybe it'll be even better than that. But this is really good for the city, I think, to see you wanting to stay here and build and benefit and this is really good i'm really happy about this so so the process that we'll be using they'll take action here as a recommendation to the city council so it'd be helpful if you could right. attend that part of the meeting too. Okay. and you're welcome to stay i'm pretty sure there won't be any opposition and the hearing then would be set for the 15th of june i believe which is the beginning of history week Oh, oh. And, uh, but anyway, uh, you can come and enjoy History Week with us, too. So is there a motion, then, to recommend this to the council? No, I move to recommend adopting the resolution. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks so thank very you. much. Thank and you. And thank you. Yeah. It's really exciting. So. We're excited to get going. You, you saw the hope that somebody's building is in such disrepair. <laughs> <laughs> to you know, it's just, it's just so darn good to hear somebody saying, I want to invest. It was a, in, a never-ending yeah. fight to keep that thing open. And yeah, like <laughs> money pit action. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Sheila. Thank you. It really is good news. And item three, fire department, and they want to kind of jimmy around some funds here, mm -hmm. as you will notice. And um, uh, I'm 
believe the proposal is to buy some iPads. Yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, right, and two thousand for installation, and then a monthly service plan. And uh, Gary was in here earlier and pointed out that for the rest of the year it would be nine hundred and eighty dollars as versus sixteen eighty because it'd be seven months. That's and what I tried to add down the forty six hundred would be the expense for two thousand fifteen. Right. So um, and Gary was correct. He figured that out. And I have a lot of questions with Connie and Patrick, and I don't know if anybody else has questions they wanted to ask. I, I would just refer that this was discussed at the Fire Advisory Board last week. And so when we have expenditures that are either significant or par not part of the budget, we've asked that they give a, right. an opinion, and they did recommend this. Right. Uh, Bill Kronstadt, who is the chair of it, is a first responder, has it on his cell phone as a first responder, and says it's invaluable to him. Can you tell us what the program is? Sure. What it is is that uh, 911 call is received at dispatch. Mm -hmm. uh, they log it into active 911. So, um, and then all firefighters that are going to respond hit the response. We now know who's going to be responding to the mm -hmm. fire. And then uh, the iPad specifically that will be in the three vehicles. Uh, we'll just deal with that. And so when they're at the station and they hit the, the call that they're going to respond to, it gives them the route that they go. Um, and it also tells them where the firefighters are in relationship to responding to the fire. If they're about to leave the fire station but they know somebody's just around the corner, they can wait and take them on there. Um, so I've seen it in action over at other counties and uh, where an ambulance misses the turn and the dispatcher gets on the radio and says, you missed the turn, go back. And it's very helpful for, the, for everyone involved. Um, this is for the three vehicles. We're hoping that we can might get the installation cost down, but that we want to put the high end in there as, as, as we're moving forward. What I also expressed to the fire advisory board, we have an interim chief who is a professional, uh, well respected in northern Minnesota and for our, why we brought him here. And I did bring him on here uh, to recommend him uh, to keep his ideas to himself. We said bring your ideas to us, share with us, you've got some new ideas. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about some other things too with him, but um, that's why this idea is being brought before you. We're not trying to spend tax dollars. And this is not in the budget, just point right. that out. And I did suggest when our Connie and Patrick and I met that we should amend the budget because it's a change. Um, but Connie felt that we should wait till closer to the end of the year, see yeah, how budget. our budget is at that point, and make the amendment then. And I think I can live with that. Um, I just want to reiterate that we budget on a fund level. Right. And yes, we allocate it based on lines for control purposes, but as a whole, that's what we're looking at is the budget. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a plan. It's not set in stone. It's a plan. And so this expenditure being 5000 I mean, you know, what is the threshold kind of thing? We try to monitor all expenses to operate within our means. And then next year we just budget 1680 for the monthly. And I mean, these things don't take a whole lot of upkeep. They're pretty, no. they're pretty solid. Okay, and I'm, currently the money will be taken from the fire department capital outlet. Yes, it's going to become all out of their operating budget. There was some money being returned that will go into the fire capital. But this is going to be coming out of their operating budget that we use to build out our service districts. I've got a question. When you talk about installing these new vehicles, I'm assuming that there's a port that they put them in so the iPad is then mobile or? No, it, my understanding is it will stay like in the vehicle. It's a fixture in the vehicle. Fixed in the vehicle. Okay. Connie, uh, clarify for me. I'm not understanding. Uh, the fourth, one, two, three, fourth paragraph says, <clears throat> per the finance director, the installation cost and cost of the iPads will be taken from the fire department capital outlay. Is that correct? Yes, they have a, okay. they have a light item in their operating okay. budget called capital outlay. Okay. That's where those items will come from. Okay. And the monthly <clears throat> service will come from their computer account line item. Okay, okay. I just want a clarification on that. Okay, what's some your question? Oh, go ahead. If I could, um, some of the funds to help compensate for this, if you recall, we've authorized the sale of two vehicles mm -hmm. that were just uh, out of service. Uh, that's still, that was not budgeted. Additionally, the chief, uh, is going to be returning some of the hose that was authorized to purchase, uh, specifically the five inch hose, as we have uh, an excess abundance of it. And so that's why he's going to be able to return unused hose. And we'll get that those numbers back to this council so that you know, end of year type situation, it should even out. Okay, sounds good. 
What's your thought? I'm just gonna come. We'll go into the fire capital account. Oh, yes. The sale of the vehicle, so it's gonna go in there. That we put eighty thousand dollars in the fire capital account every year. That was agreed upon with the fire service district. Mm -hmm. So the sale of the fire truck and the return of the hose, because we purchased it from that fund, will go back, back to that fund. But it's a different fund than okay. this one. So we might still see a difference at the end of the year, depending on how other expenses and what other repairs and maintenance we have. Okay. That's the biggest variable in the budget. Just so at the end of the year we have a clear accounting yes. so we can all understand, yes. you know. So. I move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Good. Okay, and the next one is the uh, accounting for nuisances. And um, I was a little wondering about that one. So I'm going to ask either Patrick or Connie to talk about that a little more. I'll go ahead. Um, in 2008, it looks like we wanted to establish a fund to help account for these nuisances. For some reason, we chose to use the Housing Revolving Loan Fund because we didn't have much activity at the time. However, some of the accounting is coming out of the, new, out of the fund 209. Some of the expenses are coming out of, one, out of the general fund. My recommendation is to make it be all out of the general fund so that the revenue and all of the expenses are coming out of the same fund because we do have to keep the revolving loan fund separate. And so now I'm creating a spreadsheet that flows through the two. Um, so my recommendation would be to move those funds from the revolving loan fund back into the general fund and account for it. It would be yeah. easier to track and account for because it's only coming out of one source. You're only answering to one source. Right. Will we at any point then transfer money from the revolving loan fund to the general fund to pay for that? That is what I'm suggesting now is to authorize the $47,000. That's pretty much the special assessments that we have been receiving in since 2008. Okay. But, and We've paid for some expenses out of the revolving loan fund, so that 47000 is the net, and then any activity that we've had since 2015. Is that all the money in there? No. How much is in there? There's over 206000 total in the revolving loan, but only 47000 was generated from the nuisances. Okay. Okay. What's the rest of the money from? It's housing it's revolving, revolving loan. Revolving yep. Yep. So where would we get money in the future to take care of these nuisances? When somebody pays their assessment. So if they don't, when we certify, if they don't pay it, they pay it on their next year's taxes. That's the revenue that's generated. And what if they don't pay their taxes? Then we keep certifying it until that property goes tax So we, we could actually be paying quite a while without getting any revenue. Has that been happening in the past? No, we've actually been collecting. We certify them for one year and there's, I would bet, one or two properties from 2008 that we haven't collected on that are going tax forfeit. And when they'll sell, then they should sell at the minimum amount of the assessment and we should get it paid then. Okay. How Plus many, interest. Yes. About how many do we have a year of those? You know what, I cannot. I, for some reason, I the number that's popping in my head is about $10,000 is what we certified for the 2014 right. uh, nuisances. Collections. That we should collect this oh, year. Oh, about 14 nuisances. No. 14, no, 2014. $10,000. $10, okay. Okay. So nuisances are going up. Because we have the intern that goes around during the summer. That was part of the strategic initiative was to improve our neighborhoods, and that's exactly the more nuisances. Like that have. house on 13th and Pine. Did any of the money we had to put in to clean that up come out of this fund? It was paid for out of the fund 209. Okay. Um, I do... I think that was certified over. I'm not quite sure what happened with that property. In principle, the concept you talked about is exactly what happens. Yes. That we pay to clean it up. On that specific property, I can't answer that yeah. question. Okay. So I understand that if you transfer to the general fund, it's easier, but will there still be a line item in the general fund for this? Yes. So we'll still have a clear... There'll be an expense line that says nuisances. Right. And that's where I would suggest also keep putting the postage just so that we get all the costs of the nuisances in that one line item and then we'll have if they prepay it and then what we get from the county so there'll be three different lines okay and then the payroll for the summer intern will be a different line right. so three, we'll get it all together okay now move to approve as requested second any discussion we have all our discussion first but that's okay <laughs> so uh, better to know what it is i think I think we should vote on that though. All in favor. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. Okay, item five is uh, Tom's back hole. 
uh, situation, and uh, we met in closed session on that. And of course, by law, we can make no motions in closed session, and we did not. And so tonight, uh, we have to make a recommendation to the council on, uh, on that um, a motion to resolve the overpayment and uh, decide what you want to do. And that involved a, an overpayment to Tom's backhoe in the amount of about $7,000 and letters to the company resulted in uh, no payment back to the city. Mm -hmm. And so the city in closed session mm -hmm. had discussion about any potential things that we could do. And, uh, and as I say, no action was taken or is it allowed in a closed meeting? So tonight it's our job to make some recommendation to the council. I just realized on the agenda request that the recommendation acted a motion that should be blank. <laughs> it should not say authorize or deny the purchase. That should be. Um, what, is that a copy paste? I, I'm it's not quite sure. <laughs> I think I copied another one and missed mm -hmm. that one. I apologize. So basically, we're asking you know, we met in closed session, we came to a consensus. We're requiring to make that consensus public, is what we're asking. Okay. So what is your pleasure, gentlemen? So if I remember correctly, the consensus was we can't really do a whole lot with it. Um, so basically the motion is to kind of drop the issue. Second. And, don't, don't, and not pursue it any further. Right? Yeah. And the second is, is uh, in agreement with that. And um, it, <clears throat> is there any discussion? But yeah. Go ahead, just, please. I think Dave's motion is correct. I think that's what we came out with is just it's not quite enough money to pursue it where there could be no benefit and it's a loss of taxpayer money pursuing it any farther. And there's aspects of the case that make it it is not a slam dunk. We could lose if we take it to arbitration. They can still appeal it and we'd still end up paying more than, than $7,000 and I'm sure that would be appealed even if we won there again. I mean, it doesn't taste good. <laughs> it's no syrup. No. It leaves a little bitter taste in your mouth. But. Well, I'm going to vote against it, so I wonder if you would give the majority report, mm -hmm. and I'll just make a minority report. Because as we discussed it yep. in closed session, I felt that we should pursue it, and our attorney did suggest that we actually had a viable case. Um, but nothing is ever certain when you mm -hmm. appeal something. It's never certain. And so really it's kind of a crash. And, uh, but that was the discussion. So the, um, all in favor of the motion that was made? Aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. So Dave, you give the majority uh, report and I'll make a minority report. There was a consensus. What? <laughs> Um, I said clearly at the meeting. No, I, 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 I didn't yeah. really look at it. Just the, right. the no, agenda. No, I mean, I was very clear From on the that. council. Uh, yeah. yeah, consensus was was there by the majority. Yeah. That was absolutely true. Okay, uh, item six is the 2013 capital improvement plan update. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, let's see. Uh, we're talk they were talking about the uh, generator and the telephone, and uh, let's see, I think we have a meeting coming up on Wednesday mm -hmm. with the IT committee. What time is that, by the way? Do you know, Patrick? Two, hmm? two sounds familiar to me, is but I have to look at it. Is it 2 p.m. on Wednesday? Yes. Okay. Um, they did send out RFQs for the phone system. Okay. And they're due back on Friday. Okay. So we are moving forward with that. Um, the police chief has received three quotes. He was waiting for a fourth quote. Um, we're not recommending it at this time though since we're still comparing the quotes and we're exploring different other grant opportunities as well. So we will, it's just basically an update from the last. So this is really just information. Yes. There isn't any action required. Right. Okay, well, I'm glad we're moving along anyway. So, sounds good to me. Any questions on this? No. No. 
Okay, and then on the May 12th uh, personnel and finance workshop, that will be a closed meeting. So tonight we'll have to adjourn to a closed meeting on the 12th. And the reason it is closed is because we will begin the discussion on strategy for the union contracts, which uh, most of them are due in 2016. And the reason we want to begin is because um, there will be some discussion about potentially some changes. That's, that's potential. And so in order to discuss that, we do need to close the session because it would involve strategy. So um, that's where all of that is at. And uh, is there anything else? My just goodness. to clarify, yeah, if it was just the three council members here, uh, you wouldn't have to officially close the meeting because it's not a quorum of city council members. But like the last time you had your workshop, you had at least two council members, and I think the mayor was there. Because you have now four, you have right. to officially notice it and, and then go to close. But don't we need to close for strategy anyway? You, but the meeting's not technically open to the public, is what I'm saying. If there's only okay. three council members okay. there. Okay, okay. That's the only point there. Okay. So. But oh, it's anyway. probably safer to close it because that, just it's right away very possible that the chair will want to be there, and I don't know if anybody else. Sue will be there. Sue will be there. At uh, 4 o'clock, I think she can usually make those. I thought you there. said two. No, that you. was the, the IT workshop. committee. The workshops no, at four. The work oh yeah, the workshops at four. <laughs> Thank you. Good Lord, I know. There's so many meetings going on. I know. Okay, uh, well, we are really early. Shall we sit here and pretend we have a big? Do we need to adjourn to that closed meeting from here?